that matches the size. What on earth could swallow an avocado whole and pass the seed through its digestive system? Well, it doesn't exist anymore. The avocado evolved alongside megafauna that doesn't exist, it, it is extinct. And the only reason that the avocado is still around is because humans have taken it into cultivation. The avocado could not survive on its own in the wild. Its dispersal mechanism that it co-evolved with, providing food in exchange for passing of seeds, are extinct. So, thanks humans. Most fleshy fruits, however, that are still around today, have some sort of mechanism to protect the seed that is inside that fruit. And these plants will place the fruit and thus their seeds into organisms that are going to best get their seeds as far from home as possible. Birds are fantastic at this. Think of the distances that birds can travel. And birds don't need to eat much. So a plant can invest in a lot of small, nutrient-dense fruit with a single or just a few seeds inside. And the birds can visit the plant, strip the plant, get the nutrition they need, and crap the cleaned seeds a great distance from where they originated from the parent plant. So I mentioned before, these seeds that are within these fruits that are designed to be consumed, they have to survive that trip through the digestive system. Some seeds are dependent on being digested or being sent through a digestive system. They won't germinate until they have been on that journey because they are going to be cleaned of the flesh that surrounded them and they are going to be a great distance from their parent plant. So some seeds are actually triggered to germinate by being digested. It's pretty cool stuff. The queen palm, if you are unfortunate enough to have one of these in your sphere of influence, the queen palm, it's probably the most popular a non-native plant that has been installed throughout our county, the queen palm, it produces a um, fleshy fruit with a single seed inside. Being a palm, like our coconut, it produces a fruit with a single seed inside. And in the case of the queen palm, it's not a floaty fruit. It's a, it's a fleshy fruit. And the queen palm fruit, out of its native range and in our range, is a favored food of the coyote. So the coyote can find, will smell out piles of queen palm fruit that nothing else seems to want to eat. The coyote will gobble those up. The coyote is another very effective transportation mechanism, dispersal mechanism for the queen palm. And coyote will take, take themselves and their bellies back to their den. And before going to bed for the night, they'll leave a little deposit outside the den. And we are finding queen palms further and further and further into our fewer and fewer remaining natural areas. So this is how the queen palm is invading our natural areas. It's hitchhiking in the, in the coyote's belly. Now the seeds themselves, the seeds themselves do not want to be chewed up, ground up, and have their cotyledonal nutrition stolen from the embryo. 
So all of those little sunflower fruits, you know, that's one case where there's an economy of scale where millions are produced with the hopes that one will survive. That's one strategy. Another strategy for seeds to prevent being eaten, prevent being eaten, is to concentrate toxins or other unpalatable compounds in the seed to make the seeds um, disgusting. So the fruit might be nice that the seeds are in, but if you bite down on one of the seeds, you'll never do that again. You'll just go ahead and swallow that seed and let it pass. The seeds themselves oftentimes com contain uh, noxious compounds. And humans being humans, we can't get enough of them. We love them. We love those noxious compounds. We call them spices. A lot of our spices are seeds, of course. There's another mechanical dispersal mechanism. There is another dispersal mechanism that is mechanical that is employed by very different groups of plants. Happen to find this one of the exploding cucumber. This is a literal mechanical distribution of seeds away from the parent plant. I have grown this plant. It's true. Um, pressure builds up within the cucumber, this cucumber, um, along with quite a lot of water and water pressure. And when the temperature is just right and something brushes up against this, the little cucumber will actually race across the garden in a stream of seeds, which of course will then go and develop. Other plants that have mechanical seed distribution mechanisms. If you've ever been to the mountains of North Carolina, there's a plant called jewelweed or impatience or, or touch me not. It has an explosive fruit. It literally flings seeds far from the parent plant. These things are quite fun to play with. So once the seeds are far away from the parent plant and cleaned off of their husks, their fruit, if the fruit has been, the fruit has been removed, the seeds have been removed from the fruit, and now they have found themselves in a suitable environment, they germinate. And that's pretty straightforward. There are many triggers for germination. But of course, a seed being a time capsule and having those nutritive cotyledons can wait until the conditions are just perfect for the success of that plant in that place. Usually, the triggers are a threshold temperature combined with an amount of water. So a seed might fall, a, a fruit might be removed from a plant um, and transported in the autumn. And then the seed will sit cleaned of all the debris that surrounds it, either the fruit or the shell that it was contained in or anything, whatever it takes. The removal of that combined with a rising temperature and an increase of availability of water along with some hormones, sometimes light and light, uh, light intensity, uh, light duration can impact the stimulation of the seed to imbibe water. And that imbibition, which is a hilarious word, uh, causes everything to start to expand and grow. And it allows that little radical to push down and the little plumule to push up and the initial seeds, the initial leaves, the true leaves, not the cotyledon food, but the true leaves can begin to photosynthesize and feed the rest of the plant and off you go. So here we have that seed germination, and it's in one group of plants, they, there are two cotyledons, 
and in another